Uh, good afternoon, my name is Maher Lewis and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, four topics. The web. Now, a similar token, we also have the ability to view multispectral data. All right? And multispectral data comes in various forms from various satellite providers like Landsat or Iconos or you know, QuickBird. Uh, you know, various satellites uh, you know, produce this data. And the reason they're called multispectral is because it really comes down to us in various bands. So you have uh, you know, a red band, a green band, and a blue band. So essentially those three bands form what you can visually see. And then there are other bands that collect data in, in, the, in, 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 a, in various ranges of the multispectral, uh, of, the, of the spectrum that are not visually, uh, you know, visually seeable by human beings. Uh, and by combining these bands in various ways, you can extract very useful information. So for example, let me close out of here. And let me open up a brand new file here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, insert, you know, uh, some satellite imagery that was picked up by the Landsat uh, satellite. And as you can see, I've got eight bands here. All right, so band number one, uh, is really my blue channel, all right? Uh, it's picking up all the blue uh, content on the Earth's surface. Uh, channel number two is green, three is red, uh, four is my near infrared, uh, five is my uh, my middle infrared, uh, six is thermal, the two bands that, that give you thermal information, and seven is my far infrared, all right? So it's basically picking up, you know, various reflectance values, um, you know, based on, 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 on what it sees on the Earth's surface. Now, these files all work with each other, so I can go ahead and select all eight. And I've got to select this little option here that says Treat it as multispectral. By clicking on Open, the system will now go ahead and uh, try to map those bands through the red, green, and blue channel of your display. All right? So if I were to go in and say, I want to map channel number three, which I said was red, through my red channel, band number two, which was green, through my green channel, and channel number one, which is blue, through my blue channel, then essentially what I should get is a natural image, right? What you would typically see if you're standing on the moon and looking down onto the earth, all right? So this is a, a natural color, color image. Uh, so if I clicked on next, and went all the way to finish on that. All right, so this is my, you know, multispectral image. It's my natural image. This is what I would see uh, with the naked eye because I'm just looking at the green, blue, and red channels and passing it through the red, green, blue channels on the display system. Now, let's see what I can do here. If I went up to images and I said, all right, I want to edit the color map. Now, notice the color map uh, for multispectral images is, or at least the UI for that, is different from, you know, editing the color map of the DVM. Because with multispectral images, all you're doing is changing, you know, the band that, that is viewed through either the red, green, or blue channel on your display system. So if I were to go in and say, look, I want to pass my near infrared through the red channel, uh, the red channel through the green, uh, the red band through the green channel, and the green channel, the green band through the blue channel, so essentially a 4-3-2 band. What this is going to do is, is bring out the, the vegetation, um, you know, on the Earth's surface. Uh, and this is what we refer to as creating a false color image. So if I were to go ahead and click on apply here, what it does now is it will now bring out all the vegetation in a red, in a red color. So uh, the red that you currently see on the screen there, that is indicative of, of all the vegetation that is found on that, on that surface. Um, so vegetation that is healthy or more dense appears darker red. Uh, and, and this is because band number four, which is the, uh, the near infrared, detects the high reflectance from vegetation, enabling uh, you know, us to discriminate from numerous types of vegetation. So I mean, if we were to go in 
more deeply. I mean, we can possibly identify deciduous from coniferous, for example. And this is really great just for, you know, land planning, uh, GIS-type applications, and so on. Uh, another another band assignment that one could use is uh, is a four five three band assignment. So let's go in here and say edit color map. And say all right, I want to go with five, which is uh, sorry, let's go with four, which is near infrared. Five, which is uh, middle infrared, and let's go with channel three pass that through the blue, so we've essentially got a five, uh, a four, five, three type scenario. So if I were to go ahead and click on apply there, so now that gives me another, you know, another type of representation. Uh, now the, the mid-infrared channel uh, features a very high water absorption, uh, but I mean you can actually detect very thin water layers, even up to maybe one centimeter in depth. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, the vegetation appears in various shades of red. And when a crop, for example, has a relatively uh, lower moisture content, uh, you know, you may see shades of, of orange or copper showing up on the screen. Uh, so again, you know, some very useful information that you can pick up from creating these, these various false color images. Uh, and again, there are various locations on, you know, on the website. Um, you know, if you go to USGS or, or, or other types of uh, websites, uh, you know, you can find out and get more information on the various band assignments that can help you extract um, enough information as you need. Now, the thing, like I mentioned earlier on, that really distinguishes you know, raster design from the imaging capabilities in math or civil is the fact that you can edit this stuff, all right? So, uh, you know, for example, if you're working in just a specific area, you have the ability in raster design to actually go in and crop out areas. So you can say, look, I just want to, you know, work with, uh, you know, this specific area of my of my data, all right? So, you know, you can crop out all the un, unneeded areas, and you can actually save this back out to a DM file or uh, a TIFF file that you can then take into other applications. Or you even have the ability to do an image capture. So by capturing this, it actually makes it a standard AutoCAD image that you can then, uh, you know, bring up inside of a PowerPoint if you wanted to put it into a 